Hey guys, Lexus Overland here. In today's video, we are going to replace the oil seals and bearings on our transfer case for my 100 series Land Cruiser or LX470. If yours is leaking, which is common with both age and off-roading and mud, it gets in there and messes up the seal, this is the video for you. I'm going to walk through every single step in the video. I'm gonna have chapters so it's very clear what's happening chronologically. I did forget to introduce the uh, second half of the transfer case job when I was filming, so I'll have a little bit of a break so you know where you are in the in the repair. And uh, I'll have all the parts needed, everything in the description. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out. Enjoy! So we are going to pull the transfer case. An unfortunately common issue with these transfer cases once you go through mud is that the seal gets dirty and leaks like that and uh you'd think that these are easy because typically you just take this off there's a bolt you remove the pinion or flange or whatever seals right there but unfortunately on this one you have to remove the whole thing pull out the whatever we'll get into that but it is not easy uh on either side and we're gonna do both because while it's out, why not? So we've got Murph, we've got my boy Patch. I'll link his Instagram down below. He's got a pretty sweet page where he takes a lot of great pictures, but first we have to remove the front and rear drive shaft. What I learned the last time I did this is these are nuts and bolts and those are studs. So if you take these nuts and bolts off, you can hang this down take the bolts off or the nuts off here and then just pull it out and down instead of having to like press it out of the studs to get it off. So it's just a lot easier. So we'll start on that. Another important thing to do is mark the orientation of the drive shaft. It's not a huge deal, but they were balanced to be in assembled this way from the factory. So just some marking lines on both ends and you're good to go. All right, got the rear drive shaft out. So you can see what I meant. This is like nut and bolt holding it on. And this is just studs. So get that side off first and then this side just comes off much, much easier. Now we'll get the front. So we are in the process of removing the front. I've got all four of these bolts off. They're pretty easy to get to, which is an extension on my impact. But these, the angle was a little bit difficult to get to. Like I couldn't get the socket on because of the proximity to the U-joints. So what I've done is I've shoved it up in here, which gets me a more open angle on this nut so I can hit it directly and take it right off. So we have the front and rear drive shafts off. I've removed the skid plate, which is just three 12 millimeter bolts. What I like to do is when I can, put the fastener back in the hole that it came out of so I don't lose it, which is why these are all threaded on. because They're just there. I don't have to put them somewhere and potentially lose them. So just John's quick tips. Okay, this is when things get a little more fun in the removal of the transfer case from the vehicle. So you have a variety of harness plugs. This, I think, is some sort of a speed switch. You have the center diff lock switch and the center diff lock actuator, which is somewhere over here. You have this O2 sensor that's just clipped on. You have the harness clipped on in a variety of areas. You have the ground strap. Way back up in here is the shift linkage. I think it's that thing, which is essentially what moves the transfer case from high to low range via that lever in your center console. So we're gonna work on removing those. Gonna need a screwdriver, small screwdriver to get this off. These you pull down and slip off, which is easy. As you can see, I've already got that one out. And uh, we'll just keep chugging. Patch is gonna show us how he disconnected this O2 sensor harness that was very stubborn. Go ahead, Patch. I was able to essentially grab it like that. Yeah. 
then with my thumb on the uh, connector piece here, I grabbed the male end with this hand and the female end with my pincher finger and my thumb pried down and just yanked them free, just like that. That was the only way I was able to get it out. Sweet. I worked on this for maybe five minutes. Patch is about five minutes in, obviously. He's more successful. We disconnected the O2 sensor so that we can fish the harness over to the other side and not worry about pinching it or damaging it while sliding the transfer case out and down. Okay, so we have all the harness parts off. Now we're going to remove that linkage right there. That linkage is for the low range shifter like I mentioned earlier. And if maybe I can zoom in all the way on it, it's a cotter pin. If you can see that, so you just pull the cotter pin out. But what's annoying is on my 2002, it was not a cotter pin, it was a bolt in it. When I would spin it, it would just swivel. So I had to get a small channel locks on it or lock pliers, whatever you call them and then I was able to get it off. So let's see how it goes. Conveniently, when I was back here looking at the thing, I noticed the one connector in the harness clip that you'll have to take off as well. And if you didn't notice it, it would tell you. All right, I got the pin out. It goes pin, washer, spacer. The washer is somewhere, we'll find it. I used this pick to pull the pin out the washer took itself off, the spacer's right there. And you can see it's disconnected. I have the linkage sitting on top so you can tell what it is. And I just used screwdrivers to pry it off and finish the job with the pry bar. And uh, I think we're about ready to start disconnecting the transfer case from the transmission. So conveniently, there's a T for the breather hose for the transfer case right there. And if you just disconnect that hose right here, you're good. You don't actually have to do any of the other breathers, uh, breather hoses while you're down here. You can replace them if necessary once the transfer case is pulled. Next step is to remove bolts. You have one, two, I think three, four up there. And there's one on the other side down on the bottom and another on the other side on the top and then this thing just down and out so let's get started okay this is the most difficult bolt to get to holding the transfer case to the transmission this is the front so i have a half inch 17 short with a half inch u-joint and like a medium size half inch extension the breaker bar and you're just able to get it all these bolts are decently tight uh, but it's not bad with a half inch breaker John is removing the final bolt and we have the tranny jack underneath it ready to catch it when it falls. Well, I got my transmission jack under it, used pry bars to push it out, just kind of babied it out. Your front will hit this, so you just got to get it as far this way in between the exhaust and then come down and out and you'll clear it. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. These have threads on this side, so they access from the rear. One, two, three, four. And then these two have threads on the transfer case side, so you access them from the front. You can see this goes on there. There's the breather tube. Here's the linkage I was talking about. It goes bar, spacer, washer, and then the... Um, whatever you call that thing that holds things in place, cotter pin. 
And here's the O2 sensor harness that was very difficult to get off that allowed us to swing the harness over here out of harm's way. Harm, harm's, you know, it's a pun on harness. But uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna cut that out. All right, we are back at it with the transfer case. So I'm prepping, this is the rear and this is the front. Quick reference, this bolts to the transmission, so this has to be the front. And like, here's the linkage that we had to remove all of the connectors, the breather hose, this thing, I pulled off so it's out of the way, it just sits like that. The holder for it goes in this bolt holder, or bolt hole, so you can know for reference where it is. And this ground cable bolts right here with a 12 millimeter. The flat part goes up top to the body, so you remember which way it goes. And we're gonna do the front first, and uh, we'll walk you through the process. All right. So we're gonna remove all these. They're all 14s, using the big boy, just so it's easy. All right, so good news, all the bolts are the same height, so you don't actually have to remember which one goes where. The only thing that has a position is this like harness clip, and that goes right there. All right, so we have the transfer case, the front housing, whatever you wanna call it, we popped it. You can use these ears that Toyota conveniently placed. You can get this and pry it with the pry bar. I use this spot and this spot, and now we're gonna separate it. Go ahead, patch. And that's that. There we go. So this one has a snap ring that holds this gear in. You gotta pull this gear out. We have a modified puller to do that and we'll show you that next. So these are my favorite pliers. I've heard them as like duckbill pliers. They're great for snap rings on that and for things like this. You just go in there with the flat edges. It's not as easy to slip and then you just squeeze and then you can pull the snap ring up and out. There you go and it's out. Okay, once we have the snap ring out, the next step is to pull that bearing, but first, this needs to be pressed back in and you can press it back in too far, too little. You'll know if you're too little because you can't get that gear snap ring back in. But what I'm going to do to make sure that I get it where the factory put it, so I'm going to measure that gap right there. And then when I pull this out, I'm also going to measure the gap of the seal because I just want this to go back as it was so that it's the proper distance in doesn't mess with the bearings, doesn't have this too far in or not far in enough. So we're gonna measure that now. And I recommend just taking a picture of the measurement so you don't have to write it down and you can't forget it. Okay, so ignore the first place that I recommended. I couldn't actually get these in there in a place that was flat, but we found this spot. So this is measuring from here to the, flan to the flange, yeah, that's a flange. And um, flat surface, flat surface, 23.2 millimeters so we'll get that close and we'll be good okay so pull out the bearing i got just your regular old large three jaw puller from harbor freight i had to do some significant modifications for it to fit in the case on these two arms obviously this one has enough room so we're just going to gently pull it out all right puller took it out real easy just used a hand ratchet spun out very easily now this next snap ring it's a little annoying. You can see it's an internal one. My best advice is just use a few screwdrivers, try to pry it out, get one side started, and you can pull it out. But uh, it's a bit of a pain. So this snap ring, as I said, is very annoying. So what I'm gonna use is this very long flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna pry it out and up. And my goal is to get it up above this lip. And then once I do that, I can pull it out more and then fish it out. So 
see if I can do that on film. Put it up, as you can see, it's out right here. Um, and then I'm just gonna try to, to fish it out. It is not easy, but it's also not hard. That's it. Nice work, John. Thanks. Okay. And that snap ring out, we have to get this off of this. And I think this is how we're gonna do it. Okay, so beating the crap out of it on the wood upside down, eventually knocked it out. We thought that we were gonna have to press it, but luckily we didn't. Um, bearing sits in there, bearing's now here. Here's the flange shaft thing, whatever you wanna call it. Here's the offending seal, or one of them. So we will take note of how deep this is installed. It looks like it is flush with this dust seal. So keep that in mind when reinstalling, and uh, we'll use a pry bar to pull it out, put the new one in, and start putting it back together. So upon closer investigation, this was just very dirty. The seal is a little inset, so we're going to get a guesstimate on that gap, maybe just a picture so we can visually check it, and then we'll pull it. But this is important. You need to replace it exactly as it was because it mates at a certain point, and that's a... Uh, if the factory does it, we should do it. All right, this gave very easily. Make sure when you're prying out to not scrape the mating surface. So, and keep this, because we'll use it to drive in the new one. So here's another reason why it's important to recall how deep to drive the seal, because you could send that all the way through. There's no stop or anything like that. Okay, so we are very gently greasing, just so it goes in a little bit smoother. You don't want a whole lot, it's really just so that it doesn't catch. And this is petroleum based, and the oil is petroleum based, so it's all good. Make sure it's square, which it currently isn't, but it will be soon. And you just set it, you get the hard outer part on the hard outer part, and you're good. So we are cleaning up the mating surface before we press everything back in. I've got this fancy uh, right angle die grinder with, a, I believe these are called Rolock discs. And it's nice because it's rubber, so it won't mar the surface. And it just takes it right off. All right, our mating surface is nice and clean. I've cleaned out where the bearing's gonna go. Here's the new bearing. All parts will be in the description. And one thing to point out, you want to set it like this to work on it, but you'll actually damage the seal if you do that. So make sure it's either on the side or propped up on something so you don't damage that. Okay, so we've got the bearing pressed back in. It's a tight fit, but you don't need a press. I just use this bearing, set it on top of it, Hit this with the hammer, knock that in. Now we get to put the good old snap ring back in place. Okay, here's the snap ring. This thing's a little tricky to get back in. I'm gonna start one side, try to get it uh, in the little gap, and then just see if I can force it around. Probably won't be able to do this with just my hands. We will try. Yeah, it's not looking like it. I'll probably need to bust out the screwdrivers. Or, look at that. There we go. So that's how you get it back in. 
Alright, so what we have to do now is press this back in on the bearing in there. Because you can't just hammer it in. Snap ring's holding it in place, which is good. So we'll slide this into here gently. And then we'll set this inside the press. And we're just going to press this flange down. And then we'll measure that gap that we measured early to s earlier to see if it's in the right place. And then it'll be onto the gear. So, we measured the gap from this to that, 23.6 millimeters. So I've set this at 23.6. I have locked it in place. And I'm just positioning it right where it was and pressing it until it matches. So we've got just a little bit left to go and we'll be good. That's about good. Yeah. Cool. And just visually, it completely covers this. So there's like a line up in here and it's now straight with it. Getting a light coating of grease on the inside because we're about to press this part back on. So once that lines up, we'll go back out to the press. I have a pipe that fits over this, presses this down, and as long as this gap stays the same, press this all the way down until we can get the snap ring on and we're done. So how to pick a pipe? You want the outer diameter to be approximately the diameter of this groove right here, which as you can see by the grinding work that I had to do, I did not measure properly. So this is how it came, and it doesn't fit where I'd like it. You could either get this inner diameter, or you could match it perfectly with this diameter. I was just not perfect, so by grinding it, it now fits inside there and presses very nicely. That's it. If you have a press, you just need to get this. You can go to your local metal supply place, tell them the measurements, and they'll even cut it for you. I think this is one foot. That's all you need. So here's my press setup. I have this 2x4 in between the studs on the flange so that these don't get pressed out by accident. And then I have the pipe over the gear, over the shaft, and then this 2x4 just makes the contact point. And uh, you don't have to worry about changing this gap because we're actually just pressing against the shaft and the gear. As you can see, this rotates freely. So once you set that gap, as long as you don't do anything weird, it should, should stay. So we will start pressing. Okay, so we have the snap ring back in on the gear. Murph helped out with that, right Murph? So when pressing it, it'll almost get all the way down to the bearing, but it won't touch it, which is good, because that'd be bad. And there's the snap ring, very close, and we're good. So it rotates freely. We'll double check this gap. Okay, so we're getting ready to put this back onto there. One thing to help is we're gonna remove this switch. This is the center diff lock switch that tells the truck that your center diff lock is engaged. It does so by depressing. You can see it moves. I believe it catches right here, because this is your center diff lock like mechanism. So when it gets pushed in, this pushes the switch in. And when you push the switch in, it establishes continuity between these two pins, which tells the computer Hey, turn the light on. So if you ever have any issues with your center diff lock engaging, but no dash light, check here. You can, uh, to get into that, what you can do is you can unplug it and jump the pins in the plug on the truck, not on here. And if your light comes on when you jump it, the light and the compute, like the system is good. It's probably a faulty switch. So we'll remove that now and uh, put some sippage form and place gasket on this and get it back on there. So we're just applying a thin bead of form and place gasket. 
This is the Toyota transaxle, transaxle fippage. I might go around and just put some there, just in case. Rather have a little too much than a leak. All right. So slipping this back onto here is extremely annoying. For some reason, there's only one way this will go in. So we just had to continuously spin this like we're trying to hack a bank vault or something. And you'll be spinning, 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 about to give up, and it'll just slide right in. So don't hammer it in. Don't force it. Be patient. You got 15 minutes for the fippage before it's you got to redo it. So we just had it like this, spun it, and now it's in, and... We'll move on to torquing down the bolts. So we've gotten all the bolts snug just a little bit. Now we're gonna use Yieldy Torque Wrench. 27 foot pounds, I'm gonna tighten in kind of a star pattern like lug nuts, just so it's an even mating torque. And then we'll be done with the uh, front. 27 foot pounds. Don't forget this one up here has this bracket that's held on by one of the bolts. That's good. Now we're going to reinstall the pressure switch. We'll add a little thread sealant. Just snug it up and be done. And don't forget as well, it does have a washer, so don't lose that. Alright, so as you can see, these are different lengths, so we will make sure that we keep track of which length goes where, so we reinstall it correctly. There's one there, one here, one back here. I'm probably going to start back here because it's got a nice leverage point. So we've just separated these. It was a bit of a struggle. Some hammering, some prying, some pushing. Got it. One thing to note is there are spacers here. This spacer came off and was stuck on here, so just make sure to take that, put that there, and do not lose these. Very crucial. Here's your like oil screen. You can take that off, clean it out if you wanted. You want to make sure to remember this orientation. Here's a feed for it and the inlet, so just if you remember those two things, you'll be good. And we'll get to disassembling this. Three 10 millimeters later, that covers off. And now you can see this is, I think, a speedometer gear or something. There's a snap ring here that holds that on. So we will pull that little gear out right there. It's a 12 millimeter. Just come right out. And then we'll pull the snap ring. Then we'll pull this gear and see what's next. So we've got the little gear out. It is an O-ring, so be gentle with that. You could clean it, you could refresh it, you could replace it. So we are close to pulling this part out. The one thing that's in the way is a snap ring that holds it on the, like, inside the bearing. So we'll pull that snap ring out. And then to get that bearing is another one of those annoying snap rings that you can kind of see right there. Or we'll just have to pry it out with a screwdriver. And then we'll be at the bearing and the seal. Okay, we have the snap ring out, and just like last time, we're going to measure this gap so we can just get it close. It's about seven, seven and three quarters of a millimeter about, so we'll get that firmed up, take a picture of it, and then get that flange out. So, getting that out, it's got a little thing, so I didn't want to hammer it, so I just set up a pretty jank press. It's not requiring much force, I'm just going to get it out and uh, move on with it. And just like that, it's popped out. All I used was a 19 millimeter deep half inch just to fit over that thing. Gently pressed it out and it came right out. Now that we've got the flange out, we can get in there and get that really annoying snap ring. So just use the screwdrivers like I showed earlier. Literally in the factory service manual, it says to use screwdrivers. So it's not some hack thing. It's what Toyota says to do. Once you get the snap ring out, you just flip it over and give the bearing a little tap and it'll fall out. 
Now we need to pay attention to the depth with which this seal is installed. Pull it out, put the new one in, new bearing, and uh, continue on. So on this seal, there's actually a lip that it rests against. You can kind of see it in there. So just drive it in until it seats on that and you're good. Just like last time, we used the old bearing to tap in the new one. Got the snap ring installed. And now it's time to put that thing in. So we've got this set up on the press to push this flange back in. We have the measurement ready to go so we can measure the gap. My dog won't quit barking, which is a lot of fun. Hey, but we'll just start pressing. Check, which may not be the easiest thing to do on here. I can kind of see. Got the flange pressed in. Make sure that you press it in all the way enough to get that snap ring in. Ours was just a hair uh, too far out, so we pressed it in just a hair more and the snap ring snapped on. Now we've got this bad boy. It's only got teeth on the top, which means that it can only go teeth up because the teeth are only on the top. So we put this in and then there's a snap ring that holds that. And then we'll put the speedometer gear back in. Keep going. All right, so we've got this all assembled. It's very simple, so I didn't film it, but just put this back in, make sure that this channel matches up with that. Three 10 millimeter bolts. And I cleaned up the surface, ready to lay down a bead of fippage. Patch is cleaning this up, make it all nice and ready. Don't forget about these spacers and all that stuff. And uh, we're almost done resealing and replacing the bearings on this transfer case. All right, so we've got this back on. We have fippage in place. These four are the short ones. So we'll just get those started. And these five, one, two, three, four, five, are the long ones. This one up here is the one with the harness bracket thing. So we'll put that in first. And then we'll just go down the line. And we'll tighten these up sequentially and then torque them and be done. Check it out. All back together. New seals, front and rear, new bearings, front and rear. Got it torqued down. The torque value for this is 27 foot pounds, just like the other side. Now we're going to start uh, putting it back in the truck. All right, in preparation to put this back in, don't forget about the ground cable. The flat part goes to the truck. That part goes there, it's 12 millimeter, and then put the breather hoses back on. If you haven't replaced them, do that. This one snakes to the diff lock actuator. And this is just for the transfer case. When you put this back in, remember that one of the transfer case bolts holds it. All right, we got it back in. This is much easier with two people. What we did is we used my Harbor Freight transmission jack and got it all the way in. You will have to worry about this cross member, this cross member and the exhaust, but it is not hard. We jacked it all the way up, having it set flat on this. And then we pushed it up on this end, got the shaft in there, seated it, lined up the alignment dowels, put two bolts in it. And uh, now we're gonna put the rest in. All right, that is the transfer case linkage right here. It, uh, for some reason, wasn't lining up. It needed to be back just a millimeter, like that way, for it to uh, slip on there. So I just loosened some of the bolts on the transfer case. Slipped it back just a hair. Oh, yeah, right there. And uh, now it fit, I'm gonna push it back on. All right, transfer case is all in. Six bolts are all torqued to 51 foot-pounds. Now the only thing left is rerunning that harness. Don't forget to reconnect your breather line up there. And then it's drive shafts, fluid, and done. All right, we're putting in the drive shafts. This one's pretty easy because you can just hold the nut, tighten the bolt. This one's annoying because it's just studs. So what I've done is I've taken a thick, long screwdriver, my favorite kind, stuck it through there, 
So it's touching these parts, not hitting the U-joint, not hitting the grease zerk in there. And then I'll use that as like a pry bar to tighten this up. And just like that, it's all put back together. Front drive shaft in, rear drive shaft in. Don't forget the skid plate. Don't forget to put fluid in it. Don't forget to all the connectors. Don't forget the ground strap up at the top. And uh, go enjoy your hopefully leak-free rig.